is Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs Post Game Live. On Sunday to Minnesota on Monday. Oh. High deep drive to right. Rizzo has RBI 97. Home run number 31. And he drive in three more. Wouldn't bet against him. Anthony Rizzo takes one out of the ballpark. Outstanding starting pitching for six innings by Jake Arietta. Addison Russell, a two hit night. Cubs beat the Brewers 6 1, 6 10, and 2. A whole lot better than 1 4 and 2. Cubs, 30 games over the 500 mark. Wow. Hello, welcome in. Cubs Post Game Live presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. That's Todd Hollinsworth. I'm David Kaplan. Cubs will be scoreboard watching tonight as the Pirates and Reds are still going, but a really good <laughs> performance today. Kind of like you and I are doing right yeah, now, absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> Out of the corner of our eyes as yeah. we watch the Pirates and Reds get after it. They're tied in extras, 4-4, just so you know at home. But yeah, great. This is what you wanted to see tonight. You wanted to see the offense start to get rolling. Nice adjustment. I knew somebody along the way was going to throw uh, that kitchen sink guy at the Cubs at some point. And what a kitchen sink guy is, is a guy who features a good changeup, a good slider, and is not afraid to throw him, I don't know, 60% of the time what we saw from Pena. So the Cubs were put into a position where fastballs weren't going to be primary pitches tonight. They had to really sit back, see those secondary pitches and start to work a little bit, get to that fastball. Anthony did it. He got it going with that long home run. They started to follow suit and the offense rolled after that. But again, struggled a little early. Arietta, boy, oh boy. I mean, two hits over six. What more could you ask for? Yeah, remember, 60% of the time it works every time. <laughs> time for our Tulula Hot Sauce pitching recap. 72 pitches tonight in six innings for Jake Arietta. And look, he wanted to stay in. You could tell he was locked in. He was good. Ground outs to fly outs, 10 0. I Me mean, had his really good stuff, just two hits. But enough. Be well, ready for Wednesday. You also have to remember, you know, managers manage this way as well. You know, the errant line drive. I mean, you know, I talk about, you know, Jake not giving up, you know, a whole lot of hard hit balls. That's one thing that I watch is the hitters an awful lot going up against them. But you just don't want something freak to happen to obviously Jake in the rest of this game. I mean, this game was in complete control. So you can make the argument. 72 pitches, good workload. Jake worked in all of his pitches tonight. You saw him lead with the fastball an awful lot tonight. Even threw a few changeups in there. The slider was working, uh, even a few slow curveballs as well. I mean, he dominated a lineup once again, but it's a good time to get him out of there after 72 pitches. All right, Arietta, our UPS store, taking care of business, player of the game. And again, six innings, he had his filthy stuff going. Cubs did a really nice job supporting him with some offense, but he had his full complement in his arsenal tonight. Well, right, and you saw a little bit of this early, then he started to work the fastball in, especially the left-handed hitters. Saw a couple changeups, as I said, but again, you know, the thing that amazes me so much about Jake Arrieta is how he attacks initially the middle of the plate, and then you watch the ball basically explode out of the strike zone. That's why you see so many crazy swings from hitters. We've been talking about this all season long. That's what makes Jake special. A lot of his action really does start out over the middle of the plate and works its way off the plate. And as a hitter, you're sitting up there, you know, obviously respecting 95 and 96 miles an hour, and at the same time having to respect three other pitches that he throws. So not an easy, not an easy walk to the park at all. I mean, I, you can't even sit on a pitch. Uh, I, I made this joke last week. <laughs> he told you what was coming. I'm not sure you'd do much with it. Yeah, it's amazing to watch how dirty his stuff is. And we're talking about real quality major league hitters at times that go up hey. there and go, hey man, I got no clue. Well, that, that's the confusion. That's the confusion that you see after at bats. Guys walking back to the dugout. That's what amazes me so much. You know, it's one thing when you watch an elite go out there and blow 95 and 97 by a hitter, throw it on the corner, David Price, Garrett Cole, wherever you want to go with this. But what Jake does to hitters is he, he, he there's bewilderment when you walk out of the box. It's like you, you almost feel humiliated because he'll make you look silly at times. You watch guys swing and you saw a few times tonight, especially early in that first inning, a couple of those breaking balls. Guys are missing those pitches by six and eight inches. I mean, they're nowhere near hitting them. All right, let's talk about Arietta's routine for the wild card start. I was talking with Ryan Dempster on the radio today, and he said the most important thing for Jake Arietta is to, well, going into tonight. He goes, he goes as long as he feels he needs to go to be sharp for Wednesday. Mm -hmm. He said a lot of guys will back off. I only throw 40, 50 pitches and shut her down. He goes, and that's a mistake because it gets you out of your routine. What do you say? Well, I mean, the, you know, the question is, I know that Ryan knows that now. Did Ryan know that then? Because you have to, I mean, Jake hasn't been here before. So right. how would Jake know what ultimately a wild card game is going to be or what that's going to be about? He's absolutely right when you talk about routine. When we're all, baseball players are all very routine oriented. Matter of fact, <laughs> the, the misses, she wears me out about being too routine. Uh, I, listen, it, it's a fall of all of ours. When we find success, we want to stay with it. We want to eat chicken for lunch. 
listen, Jake's going to throw a bullpen on whatever day he throws a bullpen. If it's the off day on Monday, you're going to see him at Wrigley Field throwing a bullpen. It's what he's going to do. Not much is going to change in between, but that's it. Depp is absolutely right on about that. That's how we work. That's how we function. You don't want to do anything that changes anything up, although there is going to be this two days off on Monday and Tuesday that is going to be a little bit different, but it shouldn't be different for Jake Arrieta. Yeah, you see his stuff tonight was just as sharp as he's been all season long. Really, really locked in. Good velocity, good breaking stuff. Had his full complement tonight. Yeah, I mean, again, it's so much of the same. I mean, again, whether it's the Brewers, whether it's the Giants, whether it's the Reds, the Pirates, the Cardinals, I mean, you know, pick a team right now. That's where Jake's at. You're, you're listening, and we were watching an awful lot of baseball tonight on, on a lot of different monitors. That's interesting because I, I heard his name come up in about three different ball games, and that's how good Jake has been this year is that other teams, other teams broadcasters are talking about uh, Jake Arrieta in that wild card game. They said hey, it doesn't matter where, where the Pirates or, or where the Cubs play. Jake could pitch on the moon right now, and most people expect him to completely dominate. Uh, let's talk about the Cy Young discussion. There's really three names being considered. Obviously, the perennial guy is Clayton Kershaw. The two guys that have had unbelievable years are Jake Arrieta and Zach Granke. And I looked at the numbers before we came out here again, and when you look at them, boy, I mean, it comes down for me to these two guys. They say there might be some voter fatigue on Kershaw as well. Record's not quite as impressive. The other numbers, the peripherals are. Okay, you got nine-tenths of a run difference in ERA. You got more innings for Arietta. You got hits to innings pitched. I mean, they're both very, very similar. You look at walks to strikeouts. Arietta's strikeout number is off the charts. And the whip, you got .865 to .852. And he's still got one more start tomorrow, uh, does Granky. So the numbers are so close. I mean, I'd go Arietta because the historic second half for me is the difference maker. And then the 22 wins. Well, we could also make the argument the consistency is Drenke's story. I completely understand it. To me, it's not even a question of me trying to decipher the stats, trying to make sense what stands out more. Yeah, Jake Arrieta's got a few more innings. He's got a few more strikeouts to go along with it. Here's the thing. Jake Arrieta's our guy. End of story. I guess that's the way that I see it. That's my former team right there, the Los Angeles Dodgers. I grew up with those guys. But here's the thing. I've witnessed Jake starts every time every fifth day right along with him and it's been so much fun to watch how he's grown and how good he's become and then you talk about the historic second half for me I don't want to dissect numbers because I don't think it's really worth our time they're too close I mean this is a you know a, it, <laughs> these guys have made 30 plus starts this year for crying out loud he's got the no hitter he's our guy he gets my vote all right, we're going to take a quick time out here on Cubs Post Game Live on a Friday night in the greatest city in the world. Everything presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. We'll have an update on the Pirates and the Reds. That's coming up next. Cubs Post Game Live is presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Was close. Hey, Ralph Punzel. Oh, hey, Ronnie. Where are you headed? Great Clips. You're getting a haircut? I checked in already. He's in their online check-in. I'm dying to check. -in. It saves you time. You're getting a haircut. Why? Thinking about to apply to astronaut school. That's cool. Okay, I'll uh, see you, Ronnie. Next time, save time. Download the online check-in app today. Great clips. It's going to be great. Bring luxury to your home with help from my family's store, Sherlock's Carpet and Tile. If you've been waiting to upgrade your carpet, wait no longer. It's National Karistan Month. Come in and take advantage of up to $1,000 in rebates. From traditional to contemporary, America's best carpet brings quality, beauty, and elegance to any interior setting. Let us help you upgrade the home of your dreams with Karistan Carpets. Come celebrate Sherlock's 40th anniversary and live beautifully. If you owe $10,000 or more in credit card debt or unsecured loans, this is what it looks like. But there is a solution. 
Only National Debt Relief has the Debt Reset Program that negotiates with your creditors to reduce your debt down to a fraction of what you owe. And we'll customize a low monthly payment plan, helping you become debt free in as little as 24 to 48 months. And you don't pay a dime until we succeed. Call now for your free $100 gift card. Call 800 256 9112. With NHL Center Ice, you'll never miss up. Oh, Catch every. Oh, my goodness. And have a front row seat for every. Incredible. Moment. With up to 40 out-of-market games a week to choose from, the best of the NHL is right at your fingertips. So you'll be right there when... I can't believe what I'm seeing! ...happens. NHL Center Ice. The game lives where you do. For a special early bird offer, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS. Cubs versus Brewers, starting at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Time to check out our Sports Authority play of the game. Anthony Rizzo has liftoff. <laughs> Big strapping young man takes one out deep to right. His 31st home run of the season. That one in the fourth inning. A bomb for Mr. Rizzo. Yeah, he was dominated looking. at Miller Park. Yeah, he was looking in there right there. Got a 90 mile an hour fastball again. Pena, he's not throwing hard. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the show, knowing that there was going to be a lot of secondary pitches in this ballgame, but there were times that you knew Listen, he wasn't going to miss with a fastball out over the plate. You had to either look in or look really far away. And if you watched his entire start, there wasn't a fastball anywhere near the plate. The only pitches he threw for strikes were secondary pitches. I guarantee you look, and if you saw Anthony after the at-bat in the dugout, he was showing you where that ball mark was. That ball is probably three, four inches inside. Well, I'll tell you what, if he ever hits free agency, you look at those numbers, the Brewers may drop a billion dollars in front of him and go, <laughs> want to come play here? Uh, he, he ranks in the world. Sorry, he's ours. <laughs> Welcome back to Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Illinois. Addison Russell also had a very, very good game. He's been outstanding defensively, but offensively, he's really turned it on the second half since he made the move to short. Yeah, it's good to see. Uh and he's starting to really swing that bat again at the bottom of the lineup, and it's big. I mean, we've talked about it all second half, and I know that there's maybe been some inconsistency there. Not just, I'm not talking about Addison Russell. I'm really just talking about at times with the lineup and maybe the bottom of the lineup. But Lestella and Russell right now are really starting to come around, and I think this is maybe a preview of what we might see on uh, Wednesday. Tommy Lestella was a guy that was out most of the year. Cubs really liked him when they acquired him from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. He gets on base. He's a left-handed bat. Do you think he's in the lineup on Wednesday night? I think there's a pretty good chance he's in the lineup. He's put together good at-bats. you got to think back to this. Good at-bats against Cole. I remember a line shot double down the left field line off Cole, as a matter of fact, and he has been putting together quality at-bats game in and game out. I guess that's what I'm looking for. I mean, this part of this is hot hitters. Part of this is defense. Part of this is, you know, lefties and righties. But again, if you've got some history against Cole and you've got some numbers, there's a good chance you're going to be in there. With that little rub of the helmet there, the way those guys do it, and there's Tommy Lestella again, roping one to center field. Let's take a look at the Cubs lineup for Joe Madden and I. Dexter Fowler, a one for three. Schwarber played right field, a one for three. Bryant and 0 for tonight. Rizzo, two for four. That two run scored, a home run, three knocked in, and a walk. Starlin, another two hit night. Miggy Montero, nothing but two hits for Addison Russell and two for Tommy Lestella, including that double. Yeah, and the Pirates, that. by the way, will get to that for you in just a moment <laughs> as uh, they are battling in the 12th against the Cincinnati Reds. But Not let's talk about that lineup. <laughs> exactly. You're watching over my shoulder there. Let's talk about the Cubs lineup. Tommy right. Lestella, we mentioned, but Addison Russell. You got Rizzo. There's a lot of damage going on throughout that line. Well, and again, that's the thing that you wanted to see here in the last couple weeks of the season. You know, we knew that the Cubs were going to the playoffs. There was no doubt about it. Yeah, there's, a, a, you know, obviously an ongoing debate about where this game's ultimately going to be played. But let's uh, let's be real. To me, it was about maintaining that edge. I wanted to see some guys get hot. I wanted to see guys don't give away at bats, and that's a challenge for a young team, especially a team that's now clinched something, to make sure that those at bats in that last week of the season matter. And you're seeing it. These guys are grinding it. I love what I, what they did against Pena tonight he threw everything at them and they weren't just they, they were a little bit at first opening it up and kind of swinging a little too much but then they kind of reeled it back in again kind of got back into their groove worked the count got themselves some better pitches to hit listella has been a rock he's been rock solid and russell has had a very nice last two ball games all right we go to the bottom of the 12th in pittsburgh pirates came from four nothing down tied at four a really nice play on a line out to start the inning that a man reaches and then Marte at the plate. Starling Marte has just left the building. Pirates win in a walk-off. 6-4. A two-run home run in 12. And the Pirates maintain their two-game bulge over the Cubs. 
So the Cubs would have to win the next two. The Pirates have to lose the next two to the Reds, who have now lost 13 consecutive ball games. Well, you got to think if they couldn't hang on to a 4 0 lead tonight, it'll be real tough for them to sweep two. I, yeah, well, I mean, I, again, we watched that Cincinnati Red Series and we had, a, we, we've expressed ourselves on it. I'm going to leave it alone from there. But uh, the fact that the Pirates had to battle back, I like the fact that they were tested. And the Reds threw some bullpen arms at them. I mean, again, we watched this game an awful lot. The Reds went out there and competed a lot better than maybe what we see, have seen over the last week. I know they've lost 13 in a row, but again, Pirates able to get it done. And oh, by the way, just kind of keep that in mind. We know that we've got the Pirates waiting for us on Wednesday. Starling Marte has had a really, really good second half. I know McCutcheon's the guy, and he's probably their team MVP this year, but uh, Starling Marte has easily put together his best season and is definitely a threat in that lineup. Another thing that Ryan said to me, Dempster, earlier today, I wanted your take on it. He said, you know, if you're Jake Arrieta, he said, whoever you are, when you're at home, the phone rings, the dog's there, the kids are there, the wipes. He said, it's great, but you do get distracted when you're trying right. to lock in for a baseball game of the magnitude of the wild card game. He said, if you're in the hotel in Pittsburgh, you go to the workout, you come back, you turn off the phone, you put do not disturb on your door. He said, you watch a movie, you fall asleep, and nobody bothers you. You block out all the distractions. Uh, I would not argue that point. Dem knows exactly what he's talking about. Uh, Dem, former teammate of mine on a couple teams. So, <laughs> Dem, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, what day are they leaving? Uh, Monday. Well, doesn't that explain something? Yeah, they're going to get out <laughs> two days early, Monday yeah. afternoon. We'll be right back. Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's that time of year. There's going to be a lot that scares you. Replacing your windows shouldn't be one of them. Call 866 for Feltco. Right now, get two windows for the price of one. Plus, no money down and no interest until 2017. Hurry, this treat and two windows for the price of one and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding and doors, call 866 for Feltco. What's the key to business success? Stay on your toes and keep moving. Whether you're launching a new product or fighting off hackers, business has to be ready for anything. And your IT needs to support it. Forsyth Technology, together with leading partners like Cisco and Red Hat and technology supported by Intel, will help you get ready and stay ready by leveraging the power of the cloud without compromising security and control, giving your business a lasting competitive advantage. Want to make a trade? I need your Buster Posey Tops card. What you got? I'll trade you. You for Matt Payne? Ortiz and Pedroia? Ugh. Come on, Mike Trout All-Star card. I've got an idea. You collected two? This is going to get the deal done. 1969 Johnny Bench All-Star Rookie? Deal. Rediscover Tops. Beat the rush for winter tires to get big savings at Discount Tire. Buy now and get a $50 Visa prepaid card on any set of winter tires purchased with your Discount Tire credit card. Thank you, Discount Tire. Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Cholula Hot Sauce, the flavorful hot sauce with the iconic wooden cap. For the ultimate stain blocking paint and primer in one, choose Dutch Boy Platinum from Menards. It has advanced extreme hide technology and seals common household stains. Save $8 a gallon. That's $40 on five gallon pails. Update your flooring and add style with super fast diamond oak flooring by Floors of Distinction. It installs without glue or nails and includes a 50 year residential surface warranty. In three colors, it's only $3.99 a square foot. Save big money at Menards. Sports Authority is proud to be the official sporting goods retailer of the Chicago Cubs. Sports Authority, all things sporting good. Time for our four seasons heating, air conditioning, and plumbing. Who's hot and who's not? On the road this season, who's hot? How about the Cubs, 46 and 33, a 582 win percentage. That is the best in Major League Baseball. Love it. Who's not 25 and 56 for the Atlanta Braves? That's a 309. That is the definition of the word brutal. <laughs> Next season was over in May, wasn't it? Wow. <laughs> they wow. stink. Welcome back to Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. 
Cubs got a couple of runs early in this ball game. They were able to give Jake a little bit of a cushion. And he just put it on cruise control. Well, it was all about adjustments for me. I guess that's the way that I looked at it. I knew that, know that coming into this ball game, well, yeah, that's. By the way, they got a little help, too. <laughs> like, we were all. Really? Well, that, that's when I think I heard you from across the room drop another. Brutal! Yeah, that is that is pretty brutal. That right was brutal. Lack of communication. But that's kind of what you see at this time of year. You know, a lot of different guys are out there. Santana's not a regular. Schaefer doesn't play regular center field for these guys. I mean, that's to be expected on some level I suppose I don't like to excuse it but again uh, that's kind of the feel of this game and you know as I said to you it's the same thing in the Cincinnati series there's a reason they've lost 13 games in a row so listen good at bats that was the big thing that I was looking for I expected Jake to be Jake in this ball game no doubt about it but again I wanted to see the quality at bats that's the only two things that I'm looking for as far as preparation uh, maybe some key spots where guys are coming through with uh, runners on base don't get, <laughs> and don't get hurt that's the I mean other are you thing, kidding me well I'm, it, it, I mean, listen, Joe has got to manage this as well. I mean, you know, you, you're, you're in a position, and we've seen this happen e even in the month of September, where you've got to be very careful with your guys. I mean, your guys, when I say your Anthony Rizzo's, your Chris Bryant's, your starters, your Arietta's and whatnot, and I mean, that's part of that as well. And, you, you know, we were talking about this, and I guarantee you there's a small part of Joe. He probably would never say it out loud, but at 72 pitches, you're like, I just don't want to risk him pulling a hamstring, turning an ankle, have something crazy happen out there on the field of play because, again, you're getting into a wild card game. It's, it's one and move on or one and done for whoever loses. So. All right. We will take a quick timeout. When we come back, we will have post-game reaction from Milwaukee. We'll continue. Blue Cross Blue Shields up. Post-game live show right here on the field. try to stay directly within the Fields Auto Group. Fields has a wonderful reputation. Hello, I'm Dan Fields of the Fields Auto Group. We simply treat people the way we want to be treated. They're as invested in me as a, as a person as I am in them, and that makes a huge difference. It makes me come back. It includes our free loaners, free car washes, and cafes. It's all part of the Fields Matters program. I felt confident in buying because of the service and the fact that this dealership would stand behind it. Fields Matters because you matter. So I heard about that new offer from AT&T and DirecTV, but they still lock you in to a two-year contract. That could cost you over $2,600, all for temperamental satellite TV service. AT&T and DirecTV, call it a new offer. But it's just the same old thing. Don't fall for AT&T and DirecTV's latest offer. Only Xfinity delivers the fastest internet and the best TV experience with X1. Hey, Ralph Punzel. Oh, hey, Ronnie. Where are you headed? Great Clips. You're getting a haircut? I checked in already. He's in their online check-in. I'm dying to check. He saves you time. You're getting a haircut. Why? Thinking about to apply to astronaut school. That's cool. OK, I'll uh, see you, Ronnie. Next time, save time. Download the online check-in app today. Great Clips. It's going to be great. Bring luxury to your home with help from my family's store, Sherlock's Carpet and Tile. If you've been waiting to upgrade your carpet, wait no longer. It's National Karistan Month. Come in and take advantage of up to $1,000 in rebates. From traditional to contemporary, America's best carpet brings quality, beauty, and elegance to any interior setting. Let us help you upgrade the home of your dreams with Karistan Carpets. Come celebrate Sherlock's 40th anniversary and live beautifully. Check out the pitching matchup for tomorrow's game two of this final regular season series. Kyle Hendricks, who's throwing the ball very well his last two outings, against Tyler Wagner. Well, we'll talk about Kyle Hendricks there. I'm not going to break down Tyler Wagner's stats, what we know about him. We'll just let those numbers speak for themselves. Because we have no idea who he is. <laughs> 
15 hits in seven and two thirds innings, I think says enough. So again, we'll talk about putting together good at bats. But for Kyle, again, this is big. I mean, these are positive steps forward. Uh, you know, whether there's a debate or not, I don't know if that exists any longer. You know, we talk about that third starter in you know, the DS or whatever it might be. Uh, Kyle's in a good groove right now. I like what I saw last start. I want to see more of that again. I want to see him on the corners. I want to see that change of work. All right, let's go to Milwaukee. Here is Joe Madden. The last two times. I mean, he, um, you know, we, we were concerned him pitching or throwing too many pitches or innings the last two games. He goes seven, six, total of what? Um, about 72, like 150 some pitches for those two outings. Uh, tremendous. Listen, I mean, again, watching it from the side, you can see the explosive stuff. You say it from up top. Um, if that did not clinch his award, I don't know what would. Right there, that had to be the clincher. Another uh, quality start. Uh, a dominating performance. How many punch outs did he have? Seven. Seven and six. Um, just, just dominating. I mean, uh, for me, that was, that should put the icing on the cake right there. And we've also, other guys play today. Uh, I mean, uh, Tony, uh, Anthony Rizzo had a really nice day, too. I mean, the, the homer and then the base it up the middle, get him back on a nice little roll. I thought um, Starlin continues to wear out that gap. That's a beautiful thing to see. Um, Addy, Addy really had some good at-bats. Again, he's playing with a lot of confidence right now, man. Uh, and out of the bullpen, we did not have to. I was, I was going to use Rondon if necessary to save the game. Otherwise, I did not want anybody else to play except the guys that you saw. Uh, so everything everything kind of worked out. I mean, the things we talked about before the game played. All right, so there's a little bit of Joe Madden. Thank you for watching. You'll get more on Sportsnet Central. Thanks for watching. Cubs Post Game Live presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Holly and I back with you tomorrow night for another Cubs Brewers battle. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you. Chris Bowden is next. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sportsnet Central presented by GMC. I'm Chris Bowden. Chris Sale looked to rewrite the White Sox record books. A couple of surprising names among the Blackhawks cuts. And Fred Hoiberg looks to find a happy balance between his personal and professional life. Sportsnet Central starts right now. to Sportsnet Central, presented by GMC. Among our top stories on the first Friday of October, the Blackhawks roster pairing process continues with reports that they have placed one of their 2013 Stanley Cup heroes, Brian Bickle, on waivers, while Marco Dano, the highly regarded prospect they acquired in the Brandon Saad trade, was among eight players sent to the minors. Jay Cutler and Alshon Jeffrey again had limited practice at Friday's Bears workout, the number one quarterback and Number one wide out among seven players the team lists as questionable Directly for Sunday's line. game with Oakland. And while the baseball team on the other side of town rides high, there are changes coming for the White Sox, but for now, only in the form of coaches Harold Baines and Mark Perrin. GM Rick Hahn announced Robin Ventura will be back as manager, and Sox fans shouldn't expect a change in style or personality in 2016. We're not all of a sudden going to show up and um, be a maniac. I think there's part of my personality that's here, but it's a direct personality when I'm dealing with my guys, and um, they know I care, and, and they know I want us to win. Uh, you know, nobody takes it harder than we do. Uh, you know, when you're putting the uniform on, you go through a grind, and the season is a difficult thing to go through, um, and we're doing it 24 hours a day. It's, it's not just, uh, you know, the hours we're here doing the game. I, I take it personal, and it's hard especially when it goes like this, and, and nobody wants this to turn around as much as I do. It's now time for the Hunt for October, presented by Feldco. 
And one last regular season bow for the most consistently dominant Cubs starting pitcher since Rick Sutcliffe's run in 1984. With an eye towards keeping him on schedule for Wednesday's wild card game with the Pirates, Jake Arrieta took his 15-1 record and sub-1 ERA over his last 19 starts to the bump in Milwaukee for the opener of the last scheduled weekend of 2015. Up to Miller Park we go and and wait what what's Jake doing in the stands up there it's just a fan with an Arietta beard the Rio Jake striking out Logan Schaefer then Adam Lind in the first to the second he fans Gene Segura with the curveball top of the third man on second one out Tommy Listella takes Ariel Pena to the right field wall Addison Russell getting on his horse coming around third and scoring Cubs grab a one nothing lead bottom three Arietta still dealing gets Nevin Ashley on the curve then we move to the fourth where Anthony Rizzo adds on with some offense Sunday to Minnesota on Monday high deep drive to right Rizzo has RBI 97 home run number 31 and that's his fifth at Miller Park this season his most at any road facility 2-0 Cubs bottom four Arietta keeps on keeping on getting Schaefer again with a sinker then Domingo Santana with a slider part of 11 straight batters he had retired top five bases loaded one out for Rizzo and the first baseman comes through again this time a single to center two run score RBI's 98 and 99 for Riz 4-0 Cubs Top of the six now. Runner on second, two outs. It's Dexter Fowler's turn. Get in on the fun. Singling home Russell. Cubs lead grows to five zip. And Arietta adds to his strikeout total in the bottom half. Fanning Luis Sardinius. He punched out seven to finish with 236 on the season. Then the seventh more offense. Darlin Castro making a case. That starting second base spot in the wild card game with a run scoring double to the wall and center. 21 runs driven in in his last 25 for Castro. Cubs win 6 1 to move 30 games over 500. And Arietta gets win number 22. Yeah. Okay, you knew that was going to be a short morning. Yeah, sure. Okay, with that? Um, yeah, I mean, the, all, with the circumstances the way they are, um, it's uh, it's not a it's not a bad move. Um, you know, um, obviously would like to stay out there, but um, you know, Wednesday is. Uh, the most important thing for us right now and getting ready for that day um, is uh, is pretty much the the most important thing to everybody here so uh, you know it, it is what it is I'm, I'm fine with it are you able to, uh, to get your mind around what this how this season is added up can you evaluate it so far regular season um, no I don't really have we don't have time for that yet um, you know enjoy the win tonight and um, Start getting ready for Pittsburgh on Wednesday. Do you feel like everything has been building towards that point? You know, Wednesday night, what's your confidence level like? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, you know, that's kind of the situation we're in right now. Um, yeah, definitely prepared. Obviously confident. Um, everything's where it needs to be. Uh, you know, if, if Pittsburgh happens to lose two out of three, I think we play the game at home, if that's correct. Um, so we'll see what happens. We need to take care of business here, maybe have some good fortune with them in Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, and uh, see what happens. You think at all about that Cy Young? I mean, it, it has been talked about a lot. You know, a lot of people think you're the, maybe, maybe the favorite at this point. Um, that would be cool. Um, I don't even know when when that award is announced or or whatever so I, yeah so that's um you know when the season's season's over we'll um we'll, we'll think about that a little bit more but obviously wednesday is uh this is the most important thing for everybody here and that's where i'm going to keep my focus for now before the game joe was telling us how he saw you at the hotel with, with the family and just like prepping like a normal <laughs> Normal day. Well, yeah, I mean, pretty normal for you. Yeah, well, I, I don't think that. I think it's kind of foolish to uh, to change your day, especially before you get to the field, um, because you're because you're pitching that day. Um, 
families in town, get up, go to a good breakfast, walk around, maybe go to the park, and then go to the field and you know get the mind ready uh, for the task at hand during the game. But uh, but yeah, my days are uh, pretty uh, pretty similar regardless of, of of what's going on that day. Um, and before I get to the field, I gotta pl I gotta be dad. So the kids are always wanting to run around and do something. So that's that's what we like to do. He said he was watching. How's this for an ace? Arietta wraps up the season with a 22 and six record, an earn on average of 1.77 since the All-Star break. He went 12 and one with a 0 0.75 ERA, including an 11-0 record since August 1st. He dominated on the road this season, 13 and one, the ERA a buck 60. Team Cubs are chasing the Pirates, hosting the Reds. Home field advantage for Wednesday still hanging in the balance. 3 0 Reds in the third. Eugenio Suarez lines a single to center. Brandon Phillips scores, and the Reds lead 4 0. But in the sixth, Pirates come back. Now down only 4 3. Jordy Mercer singling to right center. Ramos Ramirez scores. They're even at four. Same score, bottom 12. Runner on first, Starlin Marte. Sends one deep to right and out for the walk-off. Two-run homer. Pirates beat the Reds 6-4 to four as they take care of business and trying to protect home field Wednesday as well. All right, speaking of aces in a pitching rotation, Chris Sale's season hasn't been as dominant as the White Sox have been used to, in part due to the team struggles. And while the lefty's top priority was registering his 13th win in his final start, he was three strikeouts from setting a new single-season 107-year-old club record held by Ed Walsh. Sox had dropped seven of nine heading into this final series against Detroit. And it would be a good start for Sale. First inning, facing Rajay Davis, getting him swinging. Then Nick Castellanos follows suit to tie Walsh's franchise record of 269. That sets up history in the second. Franchise record of 207 strikeouts for Chris Sale. And a nice ovation would ensue. Ian Walsh holding the top six strikeout seasons in Sox history is the southpaw. Oh, Tips his cap to the home right? crowd. Third inning, Sox down one nothing, but the red hot Adam Eaton changes that. A gapper to left center off Alfredo Simon. Carlos Sanchez, Tyler Saladino come around to score. Eaton would get thrown out rounding second but not after reaching safely in his 20th straight game. 2-1 Sox. And kind of a funny moment in the eighth inning. Robin Matura comes out to get sale after seven strikeouts and seven, or, or does he? Matt Albers thinks so, then turns around. Then he, he does indeed come in to pitch and eventually escape. A two-on, nobody out jam. One last huge ovation for sale as the Sox hang on to win 2-1. to one. Sale finishing with 13 wins and the record. I, I felt like I, I couldn't really pitch until I got it, and then after that, I kind of settled in. Um, you know, it was, a, it was fun. It was a great experience. It's something I'll, I'll never forget. I definitely appreciate it. It's something that, um, you know, hasn't quite set in yet, but I, I know what it means. I know what it is, and, and you know, I'm very thankful for that and, and very appreciative of it. I took a little bit to, to kind of soak it in and, and looked around and just, just to be able to appreciate the, the, that moment. Um, you know, it comes and goes real quick, but um, you know, I'll, I'll never forget that. So Sale sets the standard atop the franchise's single-season punch-out ledger. Walsh had the previous four best marks prior to this year over a five-season stretch of at least 254. And Sale had already surpassed his previous career mark set a couple of years ago. Time for tonight's Country Financial's top performers. Sale, seven strong, allowing five hits, a run, and a walk while finishing with those seven Ks and finishing a, a roller coaster 2015 on a high note, 13 and 11 record. Jake Arietta continuing his Cy Young season, throwing six scoreless innings in his finale while picking up win number 22. Former Sox pitcher Mark Burley with his 15th win of the season for the playoff bound Blue Jays. Could Matt Forte be in for a big day on the ground against the Raiders? Offensive coordinator Adam Gase weighs in cautiously. Also on Sportsnet Central, we'll sit down with the mayor, who knows the importance of balancing his personal and professional lives in his first year on the job with the Bulls. Going home and seeing your kids, and even after a miserable day, still put a smile on your face to, uh, to get through the tough times. 
Sportsnet Central on Comcast Sportsnet is presented to you by GMC. We are professional grade. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, that's exactly what we deliver. This is precision. This is GMC. Now get one year of Sirius XM satellite radio and pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select Sierra 1500 Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Welcome to the show. This is it. Oh, now I know why dads cry at weddings. <laughs> hey, just go to LendingTree.com. You can shop for a personal loan for almost anything and save money. At LendingTree, shop and compare loan offers from top lenders, and in just five minutes, you can save thousands. LendingTree, the place to shop for money. And she's only going to wear it once. Tomorrow on Plus, the Hawks face Sharpie for the first time in a regular season tune-up at the UC. Blackhawks, Stars, tomorrow at 7.30 on CSM Plus. Blackhawks preseason hockey on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by AT&T U-First high-speed internet. Worked for Jimmy John's for six years. I'm an opening slash training manager. I hired this joke in January. And she never regretted it. <laughs> I've taught this guy everything he knows. Yeah, but I'm still faster. Faster, my butt. Every now and again, I like to think that people can catch up to my speed. I got faster than them in like two months. His mouth got a little bit faster. When you get trained by the best, you become the best. <laughs> I absolutely love making sandwiches, and I love working with people. Just getting to do that every day is by far the best part of my job. Tuesday night, turn on CSN for our Cubs playoff preview show. Cap and Holly will break down Wednesday's critical wildcard matchup and look ahead to a potential division series clash with the cards. The Cubs playoff preview show presented by Feldco. Tuesday at 1030 on CSN Chicago. Whoever knows me knows uh, I like a lot, of, a lot of different genres of music. T-Swift Bad Bloods, I think it's a good one. Jake Arrieta, a 20-game winner. Zero. Now I gotta find this little groove that's up there. People just making fun of my grammar and Twitter, which is fine. <laughs> we highlight a thrilling 2015 Cup season with unique original features with key members of the team. Join Kelly Kroll for We Are Good, a Comcast Sportsnet special presentation Monday night at 10:30. Well, last Sunday in Seattle, it marked just the third time in Matt Forte's eight-year career he did not catch a pass in a game. But after 64 yards rushing in the first half, the Bears' back was held to just 10 thereafter as the offense completely shut down. The Raiders' defense they'll face Sunday is last in the NFL in total yards. But before you pencil in a big day for Forte, Oakland is allowing less than 92 yards per game on the ground. If Jack Del Rio's involved in the defense, that run defense will be tough. I mean, that's one of his things. That's his baby. He makes sure that he can. He knows how to fit the run. He knows how to stop people from running the ball. I've seen him probably stop a couple of the best teams in the league that were the top rushing teams and just absolutely give them 25 yards rushing. So, you know, he'll be ready for our run game for sure. And then on the back end, he, he has a very good scheme. His guys play fast, and it's going to be a challenge for us. Here's the final Bears injury report for Sunday. Jay Cutler, Alshon Jeffrey, both questionable for the noon kickoff. So we'll likely have to wait for the inactives list 75 minutes prior. Left tackle Jermon Bushrod has already been ruled out because of a concussion and shoulder injury. On the deal, lineman Jeremiah Ratliff's ankle also leaves him questionable to see his first action of the season coming off suspension. As are Ego Ferguson and Will Sutton with knee and elbow issues, respectively. Corner Allen Balls and punter Pat O'Donnell's chances to play are also 50-50 at this point. 
The Bulls certainly hope Fred Hoiberg can at least do closer to what rookie coach Steve Kerr did for the Warriors last season than what the last Iowa State coach they hired did for the Bulls. That answer won't come for another six or seven months. But the honeymoon stage through four days of practices have brought positive reviews. In our BMO Harris interview, Hoiberg shares with Chuck Garfine his coaching philosophy and style and how he plans to squeeze the most out of a roster that, if healthy, has an opportunity for a deep playoff run. So you've spent most of the summer watching what happened last season, game tape. What was missing? Well, I, I'll say this. I, I thought, uh, you know, they won a lot of games, a lot of close games early, uh, especially. Uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, finish with Derek uh, coming back healthy, uh, leading into the playoffs. Uh, you know, they, they ran into uh, a team in LeBron who made obviously a great shot. You look at if he misses that. You know, Chicago goes up three to one uh, in that series, uh, and who knows what happens. But uh, you know, we're just looking to come out here and, and put guys in the best spots that we can to try to utilize their skill sets. And you know, there's a lot of unique pieces on this team, a lot of very versatile uh, players. Uh, so if we can do that and put these guys in positions to be successful, uh, hopefully we can, at the end of the day, compete for a championship. When Bulls fans see the team play this year, this season, what are they going to see? Well, we want to play an exciting style of basketball. Uh, you know. These guys obviously have a very good foundation, especially on the defensive end, where you know I think Tom Thibodeau's done, done an unbelievable job uh, with these guys. Now, I'm excited about my staff. You know, Jim Boylan comes in as one of the top defensive minds uh, in the game, and a lot of the same philosophies that these guys have uh, instilled in them. Uh, and then offensively, we really want to get out and, and, uh, and run. You know, get Derek playing downhill. Uh, you know, let Jimmy, uh, you know, play as an attack player uh, from the wings. Uh, you know, use him as a playmaker. Powell finished his summer uh, it, it, amazingly with uh, with Spain. What he did, uh, you know, in a couple of those games was, uh, was was crazy. So you know, you can use him as a playmaker. Uh, you know, so again, it's just putting those guys in spots, and we'll have a great opportunity these next 28 days uh, before opening night to try to see, uh, you know, what our best lineup is. But you know, the biggest thing is getting out and flowing and and, and, and creating lanes uh, for our playmakers. So Tom Thibodeau as far as we know, lived here. <laughs> he lives and breathes basketball. He was here all the time, and I, I, as far as we know, took it home a lot as well. You have a family. How do you balance this encompassing, overly encompassing job with your family? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a hard thing to do, but you have to have that balance. Uh, you know, so, uh, you, know, you know, for me, you know, I, in today's age with technology, you know, the great thing is you can go home, you can put your kids to bed, and then you can still do work. Uh, taking your computer home. You have a cell phone if you want to call a coach. Uh, we'll obviously spend a lot of hours uh, in this building uh, putting together game plans and, and, uh, and watching tape uh, and again trying to create the best uh, you know possible uh, situation for our players. Uh, but you have to have that balance. You know you going home and seeing your kids and even after a miserable day still put a smile on your face to, uh, to get through the tough times. What's next for Brian Bickle? Our Blackhawks insider, Tracy Myers, explains whether or not he still has a future with the franchise when Sportsnet Central continues. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, that's exactly what we deliver. This is Precision. This is GMC. Now get one year of Sirius XM satellite radio and pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select Sierra 1500 Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Welcome to the show. Tonight, tune in to CSN for the best preps football recap show in town on High School Lights. Hosted by Kelly Kroll, it's Chicagoland's premier destination for post-game highlights, interviews, fan reaction, and more. High School Lights, tonight at 11 on CSN. Regardless of what I'm going through in a day, being on the court just gives me sanity. And it's where I'm at peace. When I'm driving to the arena, I'm just thinking about the game. Anxiety's pretty high. I'm just trying to keep all my emotions in check, but there's no feeling like it. There's no, no place like playing at United Center. That's what home is to me. I just want to go out there and make the people proud out here because we're living it. Country Financial wants to know 
What if you could own your future? I mean, I would spend it with family and friends. Travel more. Retire. Can make decisions that aren't fear-based about money. At Country Financial, we take the time to get to know you so we can develop a plan with insurance and financial solutions to help you take charge of where you want to be. Have that fear removed from my mind. To help you own your future. To be in control of your future. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Tomorrow, Chris Bryant powers the playoff bound Cubs into a Game 2 divisional battle with Chris Davis and the Brewers. Coverage begins with Cubs pregame live, presented by Fields Auto. Cubs versus Brewers, starting at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. As your Cubs chase history, get to know the players, people, and places that make this franchise one of baseball's best. Watch We Are Good, a celebration of the 2015 Chicago Cubs, presented by Felco, Monday at 10.30 on CSN Chicago. Tomorrow, Chris Bryant powers the playoff bound Cubs into a Game 2 divisional battle with Chris Davis and the Brewers. Coverage begins with Cubs pregame live, presented by Fields Auto. Cubs versus Brewers, starting at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Uh, Chicago still wants me and, and to be here and uh, to have this moment and um, I just need to, you know, have a big year. This is a, a crunching year for me to, to be ready. That was Brian Bickle back on September 18th. Friday, he was skating at practice before the Hawks reportedly placed the veteran forward on waivers. The team also sent Marco Dano, who was acquired in the Brandon Saad trade to the minors, along with Ryan Hartman and six others. Bickle has two years remaining on his contract, which carries a $4 million cap hit per season. You know, I mean, Bix has been a big part, part of our team for a long time. Um, you know, I think a lot of us either heard about while we are on the ice or, or right before practice. So, um, you know, that's a, uh, we can give as many opinions and, and speculations as we want, but, uh, you know, that's not, that's not really our job. We'll leave that, one, that explanation up to the hockey ops and, uh, and Stan Bowman. Mickle's postseason production dropped this past spring. He totaled just five points without a goal in the playoffs, but the big left winger played a huge role in the 2013 Stanley Cup title run, scoring nine goals, setting up eight others. Our CSN Chicago.com Blackhawks insider Tracy Myers explains what happens next in regards to Bickle and the waiver process. Obviously, the Blackhawks have been looking to trim salary. They've been looking to see if they could get a buyer for Bickle for a while. Uh, you know, here's here's the situation. Uh, they were looking for any resort that they could, so it's it's the waiver process. We'll see if anybody picks him up. I think that salary will uh, keep a few teams at bay, most teams at bay. Uh, so we'll see once he's down in uh, Rockford and everything. And if he if his play improves, then yeah, we'll see him again. Our GMC professional grade player is White Sox Southpaw Chris Sale, setting a new franchise mark in strikeouts in a single season, wasting little time getting that third punch out Friday night against the sixth batter he faced, the Tigers' James McCann, his second inning victim. He went on to fan seven in seven innings. The plays of the day are presented by Lexus. Number three, Pirates red Cincy pitcher Kevia Sampson hits one in the right. The Pirates Gregory Polanco throws him out at first. Sampson thought he had the first hit of the year, but Polanco makes the great throw. Pirates take it in extra 6-4. Number two, Blue Jays Rays Tampa's Luke Maley hits one. Looks like extra bases. Toronto's Kevin Pillar with other ideas. The great grab. See on the replay, he goes full extension to make that diving catch. Toronto prevailing 8-4. And back to the south side for number one, Detroit's Dixon Machado sends a drive to right. J.B. Shuck dives, makes a great catch, and hangs on on the track. Let's take another look at that one. Shuck making the catch, bare hands the ball when it pops out of the glove. Chris Sale fired up. White Sox win it 2-1. to one. Both of the aces victorious tonight, Chris Sale. On the bump for the White Sox in their victory over Detroit. And Jake Arrieta with win number 22 for the Cubs up in Milwaukee. We're out of time for this edition of Sports Set Center presented by GMC. For everyone here, I'm Chris Bowden. Thanks for dialing us up. Coming up next, it's Playbook with Jim Miller and Kip Lewis as they put a recap on some of the plays and the highlights from last Sunday's Bears loss in Seattle and look ahead to this weekend's matchup against Oakland. And stick around after that. High school lights, better late than ever, coming your way at 1145. I'll be back with a final edition of Sports Set Central at 1215. See you then, everybody. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. 
After all, that's exactly what we deliver. This is Precision. This is GMC. Now get one year of Sirius XM satellite radio and pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select Sierra 1500 Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Welcome to the show. We asked people to tell us something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad, yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be downtimes. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenge. The beautiful sound of customers making the most of their United flight. Power, Wi-Fi, and streaming entertainment. That's Seize the Journey Friendly. It's not the darkness you have to fear. It's what lurks within. Six Flags Bright Fest. Chicago's biggest and most terrifying haunt. Thrills by day, fright by night, and the scariest coasters in the dark. Over 15 haunted attractions like the horrifying new Gates of Hell. Buy a 2016 season pass and get Fright Fest admission free. Weekends through November 1st. Nitro Circus Live, the world's greatest live action sports event, is coming to Chicago for the first time on October 21st at the United Center. Enter now for a chance to win tickets to see Nitro Circus Live, courtesy of Sport Clips Haircuts. 20 winners will be selected to receive a pair of tickets, plus one grand prize winner will receive VIP tickets, passes to go backstage, and access to an exclusive meet and greet with the stars of the show. Go to winwithsportclips.com now to register for a chance to win. Sportsnet Central, Playbook with Jim Miller. Hello and welcome to Sportsnet Central, Playbook with Jim Miller. I'm Kip Lewis. The Bears will try and get their first win of the season Sunday at home against the Raiders. But first, Jim, let's look back at the Seattle game. A really ugly performance, especially on the offensive side of the football. Yeah, when you look at Chicago, could not muster over 100 yards uh, rushing the football on offense and then had no big plays down the field. Jimmy Clausen finished the afternoon with only 63 yards passing. So needs to be a better, more balanced attack on offense with big play, explosive plays down the field to have a shot against a very good, hot Raider team. Yeah, from a defensive standpoint, there appeared to be improvement. Uh, Seattle scored on special teams, but the Bears' defense allowed just one Seahawks offensive touchdown. And in many ways, that's a winning performance. That TD came thanks to Jimmy Graham. Russell Wilson stays in the pocket. Nice job of going to the first guy crossing, then finding Jimmy Graham. And you see it's almost impossible to match up against him because he's tall, fast, big. He's got it all. Coming into this game, Jimmy Graham, I think, was a little frustrated. Seattle wasn't using him very well. You had a feeling going into this game uh, they were going to try and get him the football, and they did a good job of it here. Yeah, and they get him cranked up early. Look, two by two, bunch set, it's stacked. It's hard to jam this receiver who's off. Watch Jimmy Graham take the outside release. You see it right there. Go up the field. Now he is on what would be the nickelback or three safety set of the Chicago Bears, Brock Vereen. And unfortunately for Brock Vereen, this is tough duty when you got to cover Jimmy Graham. 
He's no longer a Chicago Bear, but you see the safety back there. But this becomes what we call a, a, a big nickel. You got three safeties in the game. Brock Vereen played at safety last year for the Bears. Now he's matched up against Jimmy Graham right over the middle. It's one thing to get beat. You got to make the tackle. I think that's what the Chicago Bears were upset more than anything in that. And let me uh, ask cover. you this, because Vereen, as you can see, he's got outside technique. Is he expecting, here's Adrian Amos at the top, is he expecting help to the inside? Because Amos gets, he takes himself almost out of the play here. Well, to me, it looks like a quarter's coverage with man underneath. So he's got this quarter, he's got this quarter. He's not threatened deep, so he jumps up, and that's Antrell Roll right there. So normally on quarters, you would like your safety to help out with that quarters right. coverage because you're not threatened by the outside. Right. So yes, I agree with you, Kip. I think Adrian Amos should be helping on this particular play, but it's still man coverage underneath. Brock Furry needs to stay with him like a glove. And I think more than anything, it's okay to get beat. It's a physical mistake, but now he misses a tackle as well which cost the Bears a touchdown. And really not a lot of mistakes for the defense. And like I said, it, it seems that there's been some improvement. And even talking to the guys after the game, they feel like they're moving in the right direction. Well, I think, you know, if you're in a 30-minute ball game with the Seattle Seahawks, I mean, that's a one-score game again. We go back to week one. It was one score against the, the Green Bay Packers. Now to go to out to Seattle in that tough environment to hold uh, uh, the Seattle Seahawks to a couple field goals prior to half. But then once the return, kick return happened with, with Lockett, all the wheels fell off in terms of cover and ability on defense. Yeah, we'll look at that a little bit later. Bright spot for Vic Fangio's group was the fact they finally brought down the quarterback. The Bears defense went sackless in the first two games, but sacked Russell Wilson four times at CenturyLink Field, two each by Jarvis Jenkins and Pernell McPhee. Second and one, and for the ninth time already this season, Wilson is sacked. Some of that dog started coming out. Wilson scrambling, and he is tackled. Good piece of tackling again by Jarvis Jenkins. We keyed on beating your man first and then get to the quarterback, and we did everything. He's in trouble here, and he's dragged out. And that's McPhee. As Wilson gets hit from behind, and again, it's McPhee. We was playing with an attitude. We was playing with a swag. And, you know, and all that goes to show that, that it's coming along. The defense is trying to play together. So let's take a look first at Jarvis Jenkins. And for people that didn't, didn't follow what happened, he had 10 total tackles in this game. And this is a guy that has sort of established himself as a very good interior lineman these first couple well, weeks. Well, first look at it. Everybody thinks 3-4. That's actually four down linemen by the Chicago Bears right here. In a third down situation, one-on-one -on -one against right guard, J.R. Sweezy. What do we always say? you got to win the one-on-ones. Jarvis Jenkins, look at the hands. They're always working right there. Here he is again. you got your four. Boom, let's watch it go for the Chicago Bears. One-on-one -on -one against the right guard, he wins it. You know, going into the game, Russell Wilson was sacked eight times. Right. I thought the Bears, they actually had a shot at a fifth sack in this matchup. Could have been 13 for Russell Wilson after this contest. That is a very good sign for the Chicago and Bears one, pass rush. One thing is, you know, when your defensive front starts getting pressure, especially up the middle, that changes things for the offense. And I think that's what Vic Fangio's been waiting for, trying to mix and match some of these guys. Well, this is what he's this known is for. McPhee here. Yeah, he's known for the matchup. Watch Pernell McPhee. That is Jimmy Graham, who cannot block very good. Watch him. He's on roller skates as McFade, McPhee just takes him for a roller coaster ride to the quarterback right there. There's not too much even for an athletic quarterback for Russell Wilson to do on this play. Again, that's a Pro Bowl tight end. Too big, too strong, too physical, too fast. He's 280 pounds as an outside backer. Jimmy Graham wants no part of Pernell McPhee. We need more players as Pernell McPhee diagnosed as more dog. He's got dog in him, and he can get the. He's a uh, good to hunt. Let's just put and it that way. Now that they've, you know, Vic Fangio's seen these guys a few games now, you got to feel that he's got a better understanding of what he has and what he can get from these guys. Well, you saw later in this ball game. Here he's on the strong side where he walks back. Jimmy Graham, the tight end for the Seattle CS, but later he flopped him over. Once Jared Allen was out of the game, Pernell McPhee went weak side. They put Sam Acho on the weak side. So again, he's playing with the pieces to the puzzle to find the best fit for the Chicago Bears of who they want out there on pass rush downs, who is best fit to get to the quarterback. It's still, there is a long way to go for this defense. They are still sorting it out, but Pernell McPhee, Looks to be a good return on investment. That was a great signing this offseason for the Chicago Bears. Jimmy Clausen played well last year when he filled in for Jay Cutler, but his debut this season didn't go nearly as well. The Bears' pass offense struggled all day. Clausen, as Jim mentioned, finished the day 9 of 17 for just 63 yards. Second and 12. And Clausen. 
the mark with that throw. They'd like to play off and, and keep everything in front of them and just rally to the ball. And here comes the blitz. On third and five, Fawcett just throws it out of bounds. It wasn't really a great way to start the, the second half. Yeah, and then we just couldn't generate anything. Got to get to the Seattle 40 for the first. Underneath him, incomplete. Drop by Bellamy. You know, whatever game plan we have, you know, I just got to go out and execute it to the best of my ability. Jim, I have to admit, when I saw Jimmy Clausen play last year, I said, hey, you know what? Maybe this is a solid backup quarterback. He seemed to have really good command of that offense that Mark Trestman was running. I expected, even though this was Seattle's defense, I thought we'd see more of him. What did you think of his performance? In well, this? I think a couple of times he could have pushed down the field or pushed the football down the field a little bit further. Here, it's just like we discussed prior to the game on Bears pregame uh, live. Cover three looks, single safety. You got your safety rotating down and Cam Chancellor right here. You got a little chili fake. Watch the X on a hook. It's a classic cover three beater. And then you got the out route because you see the soft coverage out here by Richard Sherman. Here's the choice. The pop Pocket is fine. Stay in the pocket. Rotate to the sweet spot if you're Jimmy Clausen, and you've got two choices. If you feel this is too hairy to go over the top to hit your curl route, right away your feet should pop because you know this is off coverage out here where you can hit your out route. He eventually gets to this out route, but it could have been easier for Jimmy Claus, in my opinion. Pop, one to two, that looked like a good, uh, he could have drilled that one in there, but he does come late, but it's too late for the Chicago Bears to make a, a timely rhythm pass on that particular play. He got there, but just a little, little hair late. This is a play here, you know, Marquise Wilson, I remember this play specifically, looked a little upset after this play. You go ahead and run it, because one of the things I thought, you, you get the blitz here, mm -hmm. and... Well, diagnose coverage here. What do you see down here? He's eyeing up, yeah. you know it's man. Richard Sherman. Boom, you got man, you got man, you got man. Their demeanor tells you man, so it's free safety, yeah. single high man. Man free, I'm sorry. That's sorry. what it should tell you right there. So he gets the blitz, as you mentioned, don't panic. Put your foot in the ground and throw the football out here. Oh, You've got right to anticipate away. this right away. There was no reason. He should have known at the snap of the ball. Let me try and rewind it right here. He knows right here, pre-snap read, press man, press man, press man. This guy alone tells you he's going there, free safety high. So if you make this decision, I like this matchup, Wilson on Richard Sherman, you're in a shotgun, put your foot in the ground after three steps and drill it out here. I this free safety so he can't cheat over here. Look him over here and then boom. This was an opportunity that I mentioned. This could have been a big play downfield for Jimmy Clausen. Look, that is open right. in the National Football right. League. He's got to step on him, put your foot in the ground, and nail that shot right there, in my opinion. Is some of that, you know as a quarterback, does some of that come just from the fact that you haven't played a lot of games? Because it's one thing to do it in practice. Things are much slower in practice. When you get in the game, but as a veteran quarterback, you think he should be able to get the ball out and understand. Well, I think Jimmy Clausen has played enough football now. I think, you know, for him, he's up against it because this is a new offense for him and what Adam Gase is doing. Last year, he felt very comfortable in Mark Trustman's West Coast system. But these are the type of matchups we're talking about. It's about the experience where you go up there right away. Those clues at the line of scrimmage are almost dictating where you should go with the ball. You should say, oh, Sherman's in press man. Oh, they're press man over here. Where can I make hay and where can I gut this defense? That was there, again, just a hair late and a dollar short for Jimmy Clausen. Time for us to take our first break on the show. Special teams have put the Bears in a deep hole in each of the last two games in Seattle. They got burned in punt coverage and allowed another kick return for a score. And Matt Forte once again got his share of carries in the great Northwest. We'll look back at his day in Seattle. It's next on Playbook with Jim Miller. Who says desirable can't also be responsible? With 46 standard safety features, the Lexus RX is proof that fun can be good for you. See your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer. Tomorrow, Chris Bryant powers the playoff-bound Cubs into a Game 2 divisional battle with Chris Davis and the Brewers. Coverage begins with Cubs pregame live, presented by Fields Auto. Cubs versus Brewers, starting at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Whoa, 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 March! 
You're not Marge. I'm sort of Marge. We both drive a stick. We both like saving money on car insurance. And we both feel integrity, such as that of health care in the America of the U.S. And therefore, yes, thank you. No, no, please, stop! Sort of you isn't you. Start with a quote from eSurance and get a set of discounts personalized to you, not someone sort of like you. eSurance, backed by Allstate. Click or call. How'd the house hunting go this weekend? I love the houses. I'm worried about the mortgage rate. You should see my car loan. Guys, just go to LendingTree.com and shop for any loan. If you like saving money. I like saving money. Yeah, me too. Are you sure you guys don't need oxygen masks or something? See you at the top. You're the Lending Tree. At Lending Tree, shop and compare loan offers from top lenders, and in just five minutes, you can save thousands. Lending Tree, the place to shop for money. Don't be a hero. <laughs> Aurelio's Pizza has been a Chicago tradition and family favorite for more than 50 years. To find the location nearest you, visit AureliosPizza.com. Then enjoy the game with an Aurelio's Pizza featuring our signature sauce, crispy crust, and the finest ingredients. kickoff. Uh, I don't know how far it was, but I know the guy wasn't touched. Special teams, the number one priority coming to this game. Do not give Lockett a chance. Well, what a way to break your spirit. Yeah, it's difficult to return kicks for touchdowns in the NFL, but the Bears have allowed kick returns for scores in each of the last two games. In Seattle, it happened on the opening kickoff of the second half and completely changed the momentum of the game, Jim. And, you know, there's not really any excuses for this uh, you know, and the Bears, obviously, they're shuffling guys in and out, but you can't allow this to happen two weeks Well, ago. you mentioned it, Arizona. I mean, that's the safety valve again, what we call R1. On this particular play, keep Brock for eight. I mean, they, they, uh... This is a great design. Oh, they schemed it up. Watch over here. Watch this player, who I believe is Lockett right here. I mean, or Ricardo Lockett, he comes over and blows up. Block, or Brock Vereen on this play. But you have to have your head on a swivel, and you have to be able to attack now. He's the guy. So to give this blocker all that, you got one of two things. Attack it, but still guard the sideline and force it back in for Robbie Gold. And before you move this, let me ask you this. Brock Vereen, you, would you expect, and I'm not a special teams guy, I wouldn't expect a guy to be coming that far away and pretty much behind me. Oh, it happens. Unless, and, and like I said, I, I'm not a big special teams guy, but I'm guessing this is something that Seattle's done before. Well, no, Seattle schemed this up because yeah. exactly what happened in the Arizona right. game. That's why they did that, because this man right here was an issue against Arizona. That's exactly why Arizona schemed this this way. Kicked him up, you see him kick him out, and then Lockett returns him for a touchdown. Well, Last week was 22 miles an hour. Now we got 23.4. Robbie Gold uh, in his soccer speed. background ain't going to get that. But that's the issue, the safety valve. They've used different guys both times. Brock Vereen was the one who was the victim on this play, but they want aggressive guys to make the play. If you hesitate at all, that's the issue. John Fox wants big, strong, physical football players that want to stick their nose in there when most people don't. That's part of football, and I think that's one of the reasons why Brock Vereen is no longer a Chicago Bear. And uh, if people don't know, Brock Vereen is now with the Minnesota Vikings. He was actually picked up and put on their practice squad. And do you think with some of the things that happened this week that this organization is sending a message? Because here's a look at some of the guys that Phil Emery brought in. You got Kasim Green, uh, John Bostic, and now Brock Vereen. Guys that all came in uh, 2013, 2014, that are now gone and now maybe this new regime is sending a message that hey we don't care where you were picked how long you've been here if you're not getting the job done we're going to move on from it. we said it in the pre-game uh, pre show we said it in the post-game show that john fox will literally go next man up it's your turn this roster has so many more moves that are going to be made i said it the two shows ago 
Think of Seattle. They made 200 over 230 roster moves. The Bears are just getting the party started of what they need to do to get this team rectified. It is not going to end with trades of Jared Allen, Bostic, draft picks. They do not care. They want players who want to play football and who are big, strong, physical, tough guys that want to go in there and stick their nose and get dirty. That's what John Fox is all about. Well, the Jimmy Clausen led offense had 146 total yards in Seattle. We mentioned the lack of passing attack, but they were able to dominate the time of possession, especially in the first half of the game. It changed a little bit in the second half. Matt Forte had 20 carries for 74 yards. As Jimmy Clausen takes it from under center, there's a running lane for Forte as he scrambles for every last inch. A lot of stuff that we're doing is, is working when we execute everything right. Forte's got him out past the 20, earns another carry, and he's outside. Forte has another first down, a good running early by the second all-time rusher in Chicago history. One of the things that the Bears have done it, from the very start of this season, they've lined up in what a lot of people would consider sometimes running formations, and they've run the football. And that's what this staff has said they're going to do when they have the when they feel like it. They should, and they should not care about the score. This is a heavy set coming out period. Now imagine this: you're in Seattle, it's loud, it's crazy out there. You're trying to hear the snap count, so you've got the heavy set that I mentioned. They bring in Charles Leno Jr. You've got uh, your big tight end Martellus Bennett. I formation, one receiver to the right. So we're going to go heavy right. We're going to go power 36 on this per, on this play right here. They run the power play, pull Slauson. Look at the hole. You've got a nice block. Martellus does enough to get across the face, and Slauson is able to lead it up in there. Close, this is all you can ask for. If you get that block, running back is on the safety right there in Matt Forte. The power play has been fantastic. I love this set. This is unbalanced left. Unbalanced. Look at all the linemen right here. Let's play it out here. Let's see all the linemen. Count them. One, two, three, four, five guys. It's unbalanced left. Look at the matchup. You got everybody blocking down, and then Forte is one on one against a defender right there. And you got Zach Miller and Martellus Bennett, the two guys on the far left side of that lineup. Yeah, I, I love this play right here. This is all you can ask for on this particular play. One on one against a secondary player. Matt Forte makes a miss. So unbalanced left, you run 39 and run right at him, and they make a lot of hay. This is a great play call. I think Adam Gase is really doing some good things in these multiple tight end sets right here one on one he beats this guy turns it up the sideline you got one other defender to beat and that is the free safety does enough right there nice run good first down well executed by the Chicago Bears the one thing we know if they can get the running continue to run the football at some point that should help the passing game because people do have to respect the run uh, but right now it seems like the passing game is really where the issues are. Well, I think for the Chicago Bears, if you continue to run the football effectively, it's going to open up play action pass. Even that one that Jimmy Clausen was late to the comeback route earlier in the show, think about those big lanes. He could have pumped it to that X route on the curl route behind it. It opens up bigger windows, draws up the defense. They have to respect the run because if not, if they don't respect it, the Bears will continue to mush it down your throat. They've done some nice things in the, in the ground game. Time for us to take our final time out on the show. The Oakland Raiders are not the pushovers. Everyone thought they would be when the schedule came out. Derek Carr and Amari Cooper, two big reasons the Raiders are flying high. That's next on Sportsnet Central Playbook with Jim Miller. Leaves falling by the millions. Even the most cutting edge technology can't stop them, but it can help you clean them up. Technology like the Cyclone Rink. Six high-tech innovations built into this powerful workhorse are found only in the Cyclone Rink, like their JetPath vacuum system. It's aerodynamically designed without sharp edges to create maximum airflow and tremendous suction power that virtually eliminates clogging. And here's the patented Miracle Impeller. It helps generate 10 times the lifting power of a regular mower. Check out this beast, a commercial grade Briggs & Stratton Vanguard engine. Best of all, it folds flat in five minutes for storage almost anywhere. It even hangs easily on a wall. The Cyclone Rake is covered in patents, making it the world's most advanced machine for easy property cleanup. To learn more, call 1-800-811-5962 for your free information kit and mention this promo code 15194. Call now. It's that time of year. There's going to be a lot that scares you. 
Replacing your windows shouldn't be one of them. Call 866 for Feltco. Right now, get two windows for the price of one. Plus, no money down and no interest until 2017. Hurry, this treat and two windows for the price of one and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding and doors, call 866 for Feltco. One day I woke up and bam, boobs. <laughs> she shows them off. Double trouble. <laughs> I caught it early. I love being a woman. <laughs> Having a positive attitude actually helped a lot. She's my hero. It's a sisterhood, and you will get through it. Advocate Healthcare understands the worry that comes with waiting. That's why we offer mammograms and the results today. Why wait? Quiet on the set, take 73. What? <laughs> it's just beautifully <laughs> Saving big is no laughing matter. At the Bob Roman Auto Group, over 7,000 new and used cars online at BobRorman.com. There's only one, Bob Roman. <laughs> It's led by Derek Carr from the streets of Bakersfield. Carr out of the shotgun. Play action to Murray. Things complete. Touchdown Raiders. Carr looking to Cooper. It's caught. Touchdown Seth Roberts holds it in. Unbelievable throw. Welcome back. It looks like Oakland's top draft pick was the right choice. Amari Cooper has been as advertised. The former Alabama star has nearly as many receptions and receiving yards as all the Bears wide receivers combined this season. A good illustration of what the Bears have been lacking and how well Cooper has been this year. And the guy getting Cooper the ball is second year quarterback Derek Carr. Uh, First, it's still early in the season, but Carr looks like he's the guy that's making very good decisions. He's a good signal caller. Uh, the Raiders' long-term answer at the position, possibly. At least it looks that way right now. Yeah, he's a big, strong-arm guy, and let's pull up uh, some tape on him. He's a second-round draft pick from a year ago, and you mentioned his top weapon, Amari Cooper. Bill Musgrave, their offense coordinator, he puts him everywhere. This is an empty set where he places him in the slot. You've got single safety high. Right here, he waits for him to take the middle right here. Knows his pocket is good. Look at this patience. This is how you want your quarterback to be. Trust your offensive linemen are going to get the blocking done. And now it gives you the time to rip it down the field to your first round draft pick. Watch him make guys miss. This guy is a playmaker. Why they put him as a chess piece all over the field. Back to back 200 yard or 100 yard games for Amari Cooper. And the one thing we've seen from year one to year two with Carr is a lot of growth. He looks much more comfortable. It's very clear he understands the offense. He knows where he wants to go with the football. And that's what you like to see as a coaching staff, as a guy taking that next step. And I also think it's a more balanced attack by Mill Musgrave. Latavius Murray, they're running back. They're getting him involved in the ground game. And it's a much more down-the-field attacking style. Greg Olson last year, there's a lot of wide receiver screens, things like that, that didn't take advantage of Derek Carr because he ran that type of stuff in college. Lots of Heisman Trophy winners don't amount to much in the NFL, but that's certainly not the case for Charles Woodson. In his 18th season, he's still playing in the league and making plays. Last Sunday, he sealed the Raiders' win over the Browns. Third and 14. Josh McCown. The deep shot, Benjamin. Intercepted. Inside the 15, it's Charles Woodson. There he is. HLF. That's 18 straight seasons with a pick for Charles Woodson. The Raiders will win it 27 to 20. Jim, it's funny. I feel like Woodson's been in the league forever. I remember my brother was a defensive quality co mm -hmm. uh, control coach in Green Bay. Back then, Woodson wasn't even practicing every day, and here he is several years later, still in the league and still making plays. Now he's a safety. Of course, he made his mark as a corner. It's cover two right here. That's what Josh McCown reads. Watch, he is looking strong. 
but he doesn't bite the bait. Uh, when you look at Charles Woodson, he doesn't bite the bait. And then you look at Khalil Mack. He gets driven into the backfield where Josh McCown really can't drive this throw into the hole shot on the outside. So it ends up in a pick. And why Charles Woodson is so good? Because he realizes that a savvy quarterback was trying to go backside to hit the home run. He wasn't taking the bait. He's too good of a football player. When you look at this game uh, Sunday, the Raiders are playing very well, Bears not so much. Do you see the Bears getting a win in this game? I think the Bears have a chance in this matchup because Khalil Mack, that is a great matchup against Kyle Long. I think Kyle Long will get the better of Khalil Mack. Now it's up to the offense. You need to run the football and take advantage of a defense and open up that play action pass if Jay right. Cutler lines up under center. All right, that's it for this edition of Playbook with Jim Miller. The Bears will try and stop the bleeding and avoid going 0-4 to start the season. We'll be back next Friday to break down the Raiders game and look ahead to the game in Kansas City. Until then, for Jim, I'm Kip. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow, Chris Bryant powers the playoff bound Cubs into a Game 2 divisional battle with Chris Davis and the Brewers. Coverage begins with Cubs pregame live, presented by Fields Auto. Cubs versus Brewers, starting at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Xfinity presents Does Size Really Matter? On October 3rd, new UFC light heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier, a 5'11 former heavyweight, defends his belt against 6'5 Swedish superstar Alexander the Mauler Gustafsson, the division's most skilled striker. The tale of the tape only tells part of the story. UFC 192. Order now with your remote on Xfinity from Comcast. Glasses frame your style. Get free in-home try-on and free prescription lenses only at Glasses.com. I have lead pass at home. I've had it for a while. I'm a huge fan of the game. I still enjoy watching other teams play. You can watch any game, any story. I think it's great. A lot of times on the road, I carry around a laptop and I can stream the games. I'm able to look down at my phone when I get the ticker, seeing that there's something special happening. 37 and a quarter! I've never seen anything like that. My eyes were glued to the TV. It was unbelievable. At the end of the day, I'm a fan of the game. That's the best part about it. Follow us on NBA League Pass. Ah, the colorful leaves are falling. And the temperatures will soon follow. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we're all set to help you get your home buttoned up tight for winter. Right now, pick up this portable electric heater from King Electric. It's only $34.99. Save on a 16-pack of Rayovac AA or AAA batteries. Your choice, $5.99. And a five-window indoor insulator kit from 3M is now just $9.99. Genuine value. That's Blaine's Farm and Fleet. If you're shopping for a new Subaru, now is the time to buy. Visit Gerald Subaru today and take advantage of our largest inventory of the year. But you need to hurry because this selection won't last long. And every Gerald Subaru is backed by our Gerald exclusive lifetime warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Just like summer, this selection won't last long. So visit Gerald Subaru of Naperville today. Or visit us online at GeraldSubaruNaperville.com. What's that you say? You need something new to discover in Wisconsin? Well, join me and the rest of the Discover team every week on this station for vacation ideas and fun facts about our great state. Then follow us across all these social media channels to discover even more. Did you know every month we give away an exciting vacation? Like to St. Germain. Just visit discoverwisconsin.com for details. Saturday mornings at 10 on Comcast Sportsnet. Go beyond the gridiron and grab the biggest Bears news at CSNChicago.com. Our All-Pro Insider John Moon Mullen rushes the field to bring you player and coach interviews, post-game reaction, roster moves, and more. Plus, breaking news, streaming video, stats, and stories from around the league. And see which players and topics are trending with Bears Pulse. Or have yours by using the hashtag Bears Talk. For Bears Buzz with Bite, visit CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Max Mats and Mitsubishi.
Happy Friday to you and welcome into High School Lights. I'm Kelly Kroll. Definitely some football weather out there now as we turn the calendars to October and week six of the schedule, which believe it or not, meant 68 schools across the state had a chance to pick up their sixth win and clinch a playoff spot this weekend. But we start with Maine South, whose 71 game conference win streak was on the line as they welcomed Glenbrook South to town. Let's take a look. The Hawks haven't lost a Central Suburban South game since 2000. The seniors on the field now, probably about three the last time that happened. Maine South with the ball, but down two scores in the fourth. Ryan Collis from the pistol off the play fake. Ryan Gibbons is on the receiving end of that 21 yard strike. Hawks now within a touchdown. Maine South ball, 20 seconds remaining in the game. This would be a pass interference call who put the Hawks on the five yard line and Collis connects with Fotis Kokosu. Excuse me, and we're all tied up at 28, forcing overtime. In the alternating possession format, Glenbrook South would take the first possession of OT. They cash in on the short field goal, putting the Titans ahead three. So all the Hawks would need is a touchdown to complete the homecoming comeback. Puts it touchdown. in. Touchdown. Hawks win. Hawks That'll win. That'll do it. Hawks wow. win. What a game and what an outcome. This is the one you're going to hear about the hallways this week. Oh, thanks to the high school cube for that call. The hallways, yes, will in fact be buzzing after Maine South's late game heroics. They win a thriller in overtime, 34 to 31. So how do we follow that up? With number two, Mount Carmel at number 21, Brother Rice, the caravan with three shutouts already this season. This would not be number four. A lot of lead scoring in this one, 17-7, Brother Rice in the fourth Crusaders ball as they hand off to Clifton Taylor. He breaks a few tackles, runs it in from 23 yards out, so it's 24-7, Brother Rice. Under eight minutes to go. Mount Carmel hanging in there, A.J. Reese, Gonna run it in from inside the five. That brings the score to 24-14. But Brother Rice would put this one away late. Cameron Miller to Ricky Smalling here, and he breaks the tackle, scampers in to seal the deal. Brother Rice wins 31 to 14. Another Catholic Blue contest, number four, an undefeated Loyola at Providence. The host Celtics come in at two and three. Early second quarter action, Loyola from the spread on the Celtics 22. Emmer Clifford finds Eric Shu attacking the crease there, the zone defense. Loyola up 10 love, three minutes before the half now. Ramblers from deep in their own territory. Dara Laza takes the shotgun draw. He goes 75 yards. Nice, Loyola takes a three score lead into the locker room. Let's head to late in the third quarter. Loyola looking for the dagger from the two back set. Laja takes the handoff, follows his blockers, and he's in for his second score of the night and 12th of the season. The Ramblers spoil homecoming for the defending state champs and indeed stay perfect with the 31 to seven victory. Now to our game of the week, a big showdown in the Fox Valley 5 and 0 Jacobs at number 17 Huntley the Red Raiders also 5 and 0 we begin in the first after Huntley blocked a Jacobs field goal try the Red Raiders went 67 yards in eight plays capped off by that one yard score by Tyler Koss Huntley led 8 nothing just before the half however Jacobs with its best drive of the game on fourth down Christopher Katernick steps up fires great ball there to Nathan and Mellon the Golden Eagles finally get on the scoreboard, so it's 8-6. Then in, with the first drive of the second half for Huntley, Eric Mooney rushes it in from 15 yards out, completing a 10-play, 71-yard drive. Huntley takes a 15-6 lead, but the Golden Eagles would catch a break. Next Huntley drive, Anthony Benetti is picked off here by Sean Barnes. He jumps the flat route, and he is into the end zone there. Jacobs uses the defensive score to get within three following Red Raiders possession. Benetti would make up for the error here, keeps the option play, scampers in six yards out. Huntley survives a close one to stay perfect on the season. 22 to 19 the final. Here's Edgy Tim with Huntley's Tyler Larson. 
Just talk about the pressure all night. Obviously, the focus kind of getting uh, Chris's face and uh, really just caused a lot of havoc. Yeah, it was one of the craziest games I've played in. Intense every play. Everybody's going full speed. We knew exactly what we had to do coming into this game. We knew what they were going to run. We knew we had to get pressure. He's a great quarterback. We knew we had to pressure him to make him get rid of the ball quick. I think people realize how intense this rivalry is. Jacobs has always been a rivalry. Every time we play them, it's always intense. Always a close game, and it's always a great game. 6-0. Got to yeah. feel good, huh? Yeah, great game. Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate it, Edgy. A couple of ranked teams here in a DuPage Valley Upstate 8 throwdown. Number 9, Naperville Central at number 15, Batavia. Scoreless game in the Red Hawks, Connor Joyce. Nice throw here over the top to Emmanuel Ugamba for 45-yard touchdown score. Naperville Central up 7-0. Later, Red Hawks get the ball back. Joyce and Ugamba, they will connect again and again. It's good for a score. This one for 58 yards, 14-0 Red Hawks. But the Bulldogs respond. The captain, Zach Garrett, going to take the handoff into the end zone. So the Bulldogs now down. 14-7 at half. In the second half, Red Hawks extend their lead. Joyce and Rugamba, what a pair this is. They connect for the third time, a 12-yard score. Rugamba had seven catches for 129 yards and three touchdowns. Also picked off a pass. Have yourself a nice son. Naperville Central beats Batavia 34-14. First place up for grabs in the Upstate 8 Valley. South Elgin and Glenbard East both come into this one at 4-1. and one. We picked this one up in the third quarter. South Elgin down 26-12 until Jacob, Jacob Amrein hits Derek Kumro there. They're down 26-19. Next storm possession, Amrein and Andrew Kaminsky open down the sideline. Scores easily. That ties the game at 26. Still in the third, and the storm get the ball back. Amrein goes over the middle to find Jeffrey Kaminsky for another touchdown. Storm go in front 33-26. And then on the next storm possession, they go to the ground. Sean Griffin takes the handoff, dives into the corner of the end zone. South Elgin storms back to beat Glimbard East 61-47. Well, fans from the Thorntown Fractional and Oswego schools really got their vote on at CSNChicago.com this week, vying out for our Viewer's Choice Game of the Week. We had almost 35,000 votes. That's eclipsing our record by almost 10,000 votes. And incredibly, the final tally was separated by 120 votes. The winners, TF North and TF South. The annual Civil War with the Mushroom Wooden Shoe Trophy going to the winner, and to drive up the stakes even more, it was homecoming in Lansing for the Rebels. Early on, TF North ball inside the five. They hand off to Anthony Watkins, and he gets into the end zone for an early 6-0 meters lead. Later on, TF South with the ball. They hand to Sterling Smith, and he shows off some fancy footwork there. Then the speed. Turn it up, pal, to the house. He would go down the sideline. It is 7-6. TF South after that. Late, late first, TF South ball again. Reese and Pag Pagan, I hope I said that right, throws right to Smith. He fumbles but lands on in the end zone. So it's 14-6 for the Rebels. Fourth quarter now, 21-6 TF South, and it's Smith again who plows into the end zone. This one, all Rebels, 35-6, the final. I'm disappointed with the way we're acting on the sideline. I'm disappointed with our enthusiasm. Despite a 5-0 record, Coach Buzz not so happy with his Vikings. We'll go inside Homewood Flossmoor as they strive for, for perfection. And we're just three weeks away now from the revealing of the playoff brackets. We'll check in with our bracketologist right after this quick timeout. High School Lights is brought to you in part by Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, the top-ranked orthopedic group in Illinois, and the team physicians for the Chicago Bulls and Chicago White Sox. You're raising the next generation of competitive athletes. Why not get your orthopedic care from the best? Midwest Orthopedics at Rush Sports Medicine Physicians are team doctors for the White Sox and Bulls, now offering an immediate orthopedic care clinic. Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Aurelio's Pizza has been a Chicago tradition and family favorite for more than 50 years. To find the location nearest you, visit Aurelio'sPizza.com. Then enjoy the game with an Aurelio's Pizza featuring our signature sauce, crispy crust, and the finest ingredients. Country Financial wants to know 
What if you could own your future? I mean, I would spend it with family and friends. Travel more. Retire. Can make decisions that aren't fear-based about money. At Country Financial, we take the time to get to know you so we can develop a plan with insurance and financial solutions to help you take charge of where you want to be. Have that fear removed from my mind. To help you own your future. To be in control of your future. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Tomorrow on Plus, the Hawks face Sharpie for the first time in a regular season tune-up at the UC. Blackhawks, Stars, tomorrow at 7.30 on CSN Plus. Blackhawks preseason hockey on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by AT&T U-First high-speed internet. Quiet on the set, pick 73. What? <laughs> it's just beautifully... <laughs> Saving big is no laughing matter. At the Bob Roman Auto Group, over 7,000 new and used cars online at BobRorman.com. There's only one Bob Roman. <laughs> What's up, my man? Chuckles? How's it going? So, what's with the get-up? Did I miss the memo or something like that? Well, you missed out on the Illinois Lottery Cash for Life game. You can win thousands of dollars a week for the rest of your life. You know what that means, buddy? I'm not taking any chances. None. Win up to $5,000 a week with Cash for Life from the Illinois Lottery. The longer you live, the more you get. Easy there, Chuck. The celebration will be so great. The only thing I would think about is the people having fun. I would drink that champagne and I would celebrate. Inside Look, Billy Williams, presented by Cadillac, premieres tomorrow following Cubs postgame live. We are back with a CPS Land of Lincoln matchup. King and number eight Phillips squaring off. This one escalated quickly. First quarter action. Phillips got off the bus running. Quavon Skeins from the shotgun fakes the handoff, keeps it there on the option. Skeins gets the edge and is off to the races quickly. Seven zip Wildcats now down 14 nothing. Nothing. Patrick Carney standing in the split back. Tobias Nellum there picks one off in the flats and he's gone for the pick. Six. Phillips takes this one in commanding fashion, 42 to nothing. Well, despite the big target on their back, Homewood Flossmore has smoothly rolled to 5-0 record this year. In their last two outings, they've outscored opponents 108 to nothing. Yes, back-to-back -back shutouts. And up next is Juliet West Saturday afternoon. But while the Vikings made easy work of Lockport and Juliet Central, they've learned some things about themselves along the way. This is Drive Homewood Flossmore Football, brought to you by Aurelios. After beginning their 2015 campaign on the road for three games, the undefeated Vikings welcome Joliet Central in for homecoming. Severe weather conditions across the Chicagoland area meant an abbreviated version of homecoming festivities. But the Vikings didn't skip any steps once they took the field. All three phases of Craig Vizia's team were firing from the start, improving to 4-0 with a 60 to nothing victory. It was a game and a night defensive end Tyler Newkirk said the Vikings would never forget. This is the moments in time in life, I guess, that you live for. And this is a game that we'll probably never ever forget. We're seniors, this is our senior year. We'll never forget that homecoming was a little wet and we had to wait hours and hours in the field house and the gym. And, but I mean, it's definitely a it's definitely a life memory that we'll be able to carry on forever. We know that this is our last homecoming and we're able to send it off right. The Vikings were back at practice preparing for another conference foe in Lockport. And Coach Buzz had a warning for his players about a potential letdown. I think the key is we gotta get off that bus rolling, man. We gotta get off rolling. Lockport is going to be a team that is very, very similar to Stevenson, with the exception of they're bigger. This will be our biggest challenge since that game, too, by far, not even close. A scoreless first quarter sent a message to the Vikings that their head coach was right. They quickly righted the ship in the second quarter, with a goal line stand sparking the team after a sluggish start. The offense followed suit. With a 98-yard drive ending in a spectacular touchdown run from Devontae Harley Hampton. The Vikings scored three more times in the half, but Coach Buzz wasn't focused on the scoreboard, and he let his team know it. Defense, I'll, I'll give it to you. Great goal line stand. All right? Great goal line stand. We'll stop there. 
All right? What I'm disappointed in, that what I'm watching is not Viking football from the sense of passion, excitement, wanting your brother to do well and being excited for him. I don't see any of it. It's like pulling teeth. I talked to you about two hours ago and telling you, you only got five of these left. I'm disappointed with the way we're acting on the sideline. I'm disappointed with our enthusiasm. That's got to stop. Now, we need to pick it up and play the game like it's supposed to be played, like we taught you to play, like we coach it, because we're not getting it back from you. The Vikings took their coach's message to heart in the second half, completing their second shutout of the year with a 48 to nothing victory. With upcoming tests against Lincoln Way East and Bolingbrook, Buzz and the Vikings know they'll need to be sharper as the regular season winds down and the playoffs near. As coaches, it's our job to get them there, but sometimes you just can't. You know, sometimes you have to figure it out themselves, you know? And uh, and so for me to get on them at halftime like we did and, and, and things like that, that nature, um, I, I think if you talk to every one of them, they probably knew it was coming or should have been coming. You know what I mean? So I, and I think uh, that's a compliment to our guys because our, our, our standard offensively at least is, is a lot higher than what we, we really play that. I think we know. Uh, if we want to get to where we want to be, we can't We can't do that anymore. And uh, we learn from it, so I think we can get back to practice, uh, execute, uh, have a good week, and come back next week and just fire from the first minute of the game. After Buzz said that, it really clicked on me. Like, man, I mean, I, I saw the little stuff we did wrong. I was like, you know, we, we have more areas to improve in, and we just picked it up in the second half, and we went even harder. This has been Dry, Homewood Flossmore Football. Presented by Aurelio's Pizza. We now welcome in IHSA football bracketologist Steve Susie from the Kankakee Daily Journal. We're three weeks away, Steve, from the brackets coming out as you see it. How many teams are projected to meet the qualifying standards right now? Well, you need a field of 256 teams, and right now I have 265 teams meeting the standard of reaching the playoffs uh, with at least five wins and, uh, you know, the number of points that they basically have to accumulate to make that field as an at-large bid in a five-win team. So there'll be about 10 teams based on my current projection that will miss the field with the lack of playoff points and just five victories. The rule of thumb to look at right now in regards to playoff points through five weeks, uh, if you have less than 20 points accumulated, you've probably got a points problem. The target point total for making the playoff field right now looks, looks to me will be about 36 or 37 points uh, when it comes down to it. It's a little bit lower than in past years, but obviously there's four weeks to go and there can be some fluctuations in those numbers. The new seating process in classes 8A and 7A no longer group the teams based upon geography. Instead, it's a straight 1 through 32 seating. How do you see that as being better? Well, this is an interesting scenario now that the state has put in play because what you were running into before with especially with the 7A bracket was you were having just repeat matchups of the same teams having to play the same teams every year in early round games because uh, because of the geography of it all. The, the similarities of the two teams in geography uh, would link certain teams together repeatedly year after year after year. And then now when you look at it, you're going to have a, a diversity of the bracket. There's going to be some teams moved around the bracket, uh, placed in different places. And I think overall what it's going to uh, help to ensure, not exactly, but will help to ensure that we have the best possible finals that we can in those classes. And we won't have huge matchups happening in the second and third round because of the way that the quadrants would factor that out. It should be interesting to see how this all plays out. Steve Susie, thank you so much for your time. Steve will join the panel for the IHSA playoff pairing show Saturday, October 24th at 8 p.m. We'll reveal the brackets for all eight classes and break down the field. That's the playoff pairing show just three weeks away now, coming your way right here on Comcast Sportsnet. More action, I see Catholic at Riverside Brookfield week six and the Bulldogs with their first home game of the season, but a big night as they were dedicating their new stadium. We're gonna start in the first quarter, Riverside Brookfield ball from the goal line. Ryan Swift sneaks it in and gets into the end zone. It's seven nothing Bulldogs. Second quarter, ICC's defense helps swing the momentum. Bulldogs ball, Swift throwing right, but a Great interception by Jose Rodriguez. It was all nights from there. I see Catholic wins 15-7. Well, as we
we do every week, it's time to flash back. And well before Northwestern football coach Pat Fitzgerald became an All-American linebacker for the Wildcats, he would occasionally skip class as a middle schooler to watch his eventual Sandberg High School team play. At that time, first round playoff games were on Wednesday afternoons, so his older sister Jackie would help get him out of class to watch. As the tables would turn, when Pat finally got to high school, he was the one younger kids were looking up to. As a sophomore, Fitzgerald was promoted to the varsity team for the playoffs and played tight end. But halfway through the first quarter, the Eagles starting linebacker got hurt. So Fitz filled in and the rest is history. At Northwestern, Fitzgerald was the National Defensive Player of the Year twice and won back-to-back -back Big Ten championships. We are on a mission. We're on a mission. And, you know, our mission is not complete. Thornton is out to make a statement to their doubters. We'll take a look at the Wildcats and their quest for a deep run in the playoffs after this. Insurance was born online, which means fewer costs, which saves money. Their customer experience is virtually paperless, which saves paper, which saves money. They have smart online tools, so you only pay for what's right for you, which saves money. They settle claims quickly, which saves time, which saves money. They drive an all-hybrid claims fleet, which saves gas, which saves money. They were born online and built to save money, which means when they save, you save. Because that's how it should work in the modern world. Insurance, backed by Allstate. Click or call. No matter how old you are, you never grow out of playing dress up. That's why Zulily offers a variety of styles for girls and women of all ages. Every day, we offer great deals and amazing discoveries on unique items and brands you love. Shop Zulily.com and find something special every day. The sleeper pick, the guy only you believe in. In one week fantasy football on DraftKings, he can be the difference. So trust your gut. Trust your numbers. Trust your Uncle Vito if you want. But know this, that sleeper is out there. The question is, who's gonna play him? This is DraftKings, welcome to the big time. Play this Sunday for your shot to become a fantasy football millionaire. Play free with promo code FLANK. Need extra cash? Shop for a personal loan at LendingTree for just about anything. You can get as much as $35,000 in as little as 24 hours. This week's rates are as low as 5.99% APR. So with absolutely no collateral and without affecting your credit, come check out your free offers in minutes. Just go to LendingTree.com and get multiple offers from top-rated lenders, all for free. Then just choose the one you want. Calculate your new payment now at LendingTree.com. With the most iconic views of Chicago and steps from famous landmarks and nightlife of River North, the Holiday Inn Mart Plaza is at the center of downtown Chicago. Overlooking the Chicago River, there is no shortage of amenities and hospitality at our contemporary hotel. Our staff is anxious to provide you a memorable experience and lasting impression. For reservations, call toll-free 844-766-6582 or visit martplaza.com for special packages and summer rates. Don't forget, if you're at a game this season, you can be part of the show by simply tweeting us a video showing your school pride or a big play during the game. But what's really important, turn your phone horizontally or else we can't use the video. And then once you have it, send it to at CSN Preps using the hashtag CSN What a Game. Easy enough, right? A South Suburban crossover Evergreen Park at Oak Forest. First quarter action, no score. Dylan Henson going to change that one, though, with the keeper. Avoids four defenders and hits open field. Off he goes. This is good for 48 yards, people, and the touchdown. Eight nothing Bengals. Later in the, in the quarter, Oak Forest on the doorstep here. Jaron Johnson over the top and in for the score. Oak Forest would win this one big, 44 to 13, the final. Well, after finishing 5-4 and four and losing in the first round of the playoffs last season, Thornton was driven to make a statement this fall. And so far, they've done just that. The Wildcats are off to a perfect 5-0 and start and sit tied atop the Southwest Suburban Red with Lincoln Way North. David Kaplan has more on a team that's still hungry for respect.
Our coach always tell us to play with a why. Like they gotta, we have a reason to do something. And I look for my reason because people don't respect us enough. And we, and we say we, that everybody being highly disrespectful. Respect might be coming now. The Wildcats have given up less than a touchdown per game this season and are averaging over 36 points per game. We knew we was going to be the underdogs. We just had to come out and prove everybody wrong. We, we always say we all we get, we all we need. That's like our little slogan or whatever. So we knew we had to come out and prove everybody wrong. That's what we did. The proof came last week against undefeated Lincoln Way West. The Wildcats raced out to a 28-7 lead at the half before holding on to a 35-28 win to remain undefeated. We appreciate the publicity. We, we really do. But we are on a mission. We're on a mission. And, you know, our mission is not complete. Our mission is not complete. And, um, and, and we preach that through the depths of our soul. Our mission is not complete. The mission for head coach Dontrell Jackson began this fall when he took over the program from legendary coach Bill Moselle. Jackson, a Thornton alum, spent eight seasons under Moselle. And while he's taken many things he's learned from his former coach, Jackson is setting his own course. He began the old college tradition of helmet stickers, but the rewards don't come from individual play. In order to get a sticker, you got you have to win the game. If you don't win the game, no matter how good your performance was, you won't get a sticker. We don't get, get individual stickers. We get stickers as a team. Hey, why not us, man? Why not us? Why not us? Why not us? Chuck Garfine, Comcast Sportsnet. And Thornton won big Friday night. They're now 6-0. and That's going to do it for us here. Thanks for watching High School Lights. We'll see you again next week. You're raising the next generation of competitive athletes. Why not get your orthopedic care from the best? Midwest Orthopedics at Rush Sports Medicine Physicians are team doctors for the White Sox and Bulls, now offering an immediate orthopedic care clinic. Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Tomorrow, Chris Bryant powers the playoff bound Cubs into a Game 2 divisional battle with Chris Davis and the Brewers. Coverage begins with Cubs pregame live, presented by Fields Auto. Cubs versus Brewers, starting at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Aurelio's Pizza has been a Chicago tradition and family favorite for more than 50 years. To find the location nearest you, visit Aurelio'sPizza.com. Then enjoy the game with an Aurelio's Pizza featuring our signature sauce, crispy crust, and the finest ingredients. Tomorrow on Plus, the Hawks face Sharpie for the first time in a regular season tune-up at the UC. Blackhawks, Stars, tomorrow at 7.30 on CSN Plus. Blackhawks preseason hockey on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by AT&T U-verse High Speed Internet. Direct TV Cinema has the latest Hollywood hits almost a month before Redbox. With just one click, you can watch hot new releases like Mad Max Fury Road. What a lovely day! I'll see you in my dreams. Are you some kind of cougar? C for Zachariah. So what's your plan? And Mississippi Grind. Better all. So say goodbye to Red and stay home instead with Direct TV Cinema. The newest movies, no returns, and zero late fees ever. Movie start at channel 125. It's the Gerald Kia Grand Opening Celebration. Come and share in our celebration as we open new doors on Aurora and Ogden Avenue in Naperville. We're celebrating by giving you the biggest discounts of the year with the largest inventory in Chicagoland, backed by Gerald's exclusive lifetime warranty. Gerald Kia will serve you better. Come test drive a new Kia today and see why Gerald Kia is the 2015 National Dealer of the Year for excellence in customer satisfaction. Come in today to celebrate the grand opening of the all-new Gerald Kia of Naperville. Ah, the colorful leaves are falling. And the temperatures will soon follow. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we're all set to help you get your home buttoned up tight for winter. Right now, pick up this portable electric heater from King Electric. It's only $34.99. Save on a 16-pack of Rayovac AA or AAA batteries. Your choice, $5.99. And a five-window indoor insulator kit from 3M is now just $9.99. Genuine value. That's Blaine's Farm and Fleet. I'm Jeff Samarja, and you're watching the home of White Sox Baseball, CSN Chicago. Everybody, I'm Chris Bogdan, and this is Sportsnet Central, presented by CLR. History is made on the south side. Chris Sale etches his name into the record books, while the Cubs turn to their ace against Milwaukee. 
a lot of unique pieces on this team, a lot of very versatile uh, players. The mayor of the Bulls shares his thoughts on his new team, and postseason hero for the Hawks could be on his way out. They are good, and so are we. Sportsnet Central, let's go. to Sportsnet Central, presented by CLR. Chicago baseball fans got to enjoy a double dip treat here on Comcast Sportsnet last night, an opportunity to check out the Aces from both sides of town who took the mound. Dueling number 49s, Chris Sale and Jake Arrieta took their final regular season bows of 2015, though Arrieta has a more important start coming Wednesday night. It was the seventh time this year they pitched on the same day. Let's begin with the 21 game winner, Arietta and company north of the border against the Brew Crew. That as the Cubs hunt for October, presented by Feldco, continued on day two of the month in which they'll play at least one extra game. To Miller Park and Jake, what are you doing in the stands? You got to get down and pitch. Wait, that's a, a fake Jake face right there. No worries. The real Jake striking out. Logan Schaefer in the first, then Adam Lynn. Then to the second, he fans Gene Segura with the curveball. Top of the third, man on second, one out. The Cubs get on the board first. Tommy LaStella taking Ariel Pena to the right field wall. Addison Russell turns around third and scores. Cubs grab the one nothing lead. Bottom three, Arietta still dealing. Getting Nevin Ashley on the curve. Then to the fourth, Anthony Rizzo adds to the lead at the dish. To Minnesota on Monday. High deep drive to right. Rizzo. RBI 97, home run number 31. That's his fifth homer also this year at Miller Park, his most at any road facility. 2 nothing Cubs. Bottom four, Arietta, Roland. Fanning Schaefer again with the sinker, then gets Domingo Santana with a slider. Part of 11 straight batters, he retired. Top five. Bases juiced with one out for Rizzo. And he comes through again, this time with the base knock to center. Two runs score, RBIs 98 and 99 for the Riz Kid. 4 nothing in favor of the Cubs. Top of the six now. Runners on second. Two outs, Dexter Fowler's turn to get in on the fun. Singling home Russell. The Cubs lead grows to five, and that's mighty comfortable for Arietta, who adds to his strikeout total in the bottom half. Fanning Luis Sardinas. He punched out seven to finish with 236 on the season. In the seventh, Starlin Castro making a case for that starting second base spot in the wild card game with a run scoring double to the wall in center. 21 runs driven in in his last 25 games. Cubs win 6 1 to move 30 games over 500. Arietta with win number 22. I've not seen it. Um, I don't think a lot of people have. I mean, if you really break them down from the All Star break to the end, I guess Mr. Gibson's the only other dude, right? And he was my favorite pitcher growing up. So um, it's it, you really, it, it's you're hard pressed to find a better performance than he's put on for the last several months. He's actually been way better than Gibson in the second half. And Gibson was, and, and I, you know, it's, that's, that's like sacred ground for me right there. But if he's beaten Bob Gibson, that's that's pretty impressive. So just how good was Arietta's season? Let's take a peek at the numbers. The righty finishing with 22 wins, 12 of which came after the All-Star game. Meantime, is 0.75 ERA since the Midsummer Classic, the best in Major League history since 1933. Certainly the Cubs and their fans hope the run continues in Wednesday's wild card play-in game. Arietta, 3-1 and one in five starts against the Bucks this season. And that's a little bit of history. The second pitcher in Major League history with 10 plus strikeouts in eight consecutive games. Bingo! Yes! Bingo! Yes! 98! Yes, he did. Bingo! That's nasty. That's number 10. He gone. Chris Sale's season hasn't been as dominant as the White Sox have been used to, in part due to the team struggles. And while the lefty's top priority was registering his 13th win in.